Hello, everybody, and welcome to a, another episode of the Beer Garden. We are going to Happy Valley, and we're going to give you the triple trio, as well as our best bet and value bet. It is quite the card. There are 10 races on this card, and we are very excited. Let's start off with Joe, who is your first pick in race four, which is the Sunny Up Handicap, the class four over 1,000 meters or six furlongs. Joe, who, are, who do you like here? Yeah, for the for the triple trio, uh, I don't think there's any jackpot this week, but for Happy Valley, but I decided to go with uh, one down the bottom, Nor Nor Ryder. Um, now he's had really bad performances, but then he goes back down a little bit in weight, going from 57 kilos to 56 with Derek Lung, and he's had a, a last win. Um, back in October of 2021. And then before that, he hasn't had anything since maybe a third, but he could probably sneak in. I didn't go with some, some like ones that have had good form or some, some like really best bet prices. I went for like some bigger ones that could go outside the box. And he's had some, he had some, um, Form against Spicy Grills one sp smart idea. I know Sarah's had that one as a best bet before. Lightning Storm, Compassion Spirit, Happy Tango, Momentum Jet, Momentum Galaxy. So I think Derek Long tries to get back. Now he lost by ten lengths last time, but when he won, he won um, almost by a, by a half a length. So I think he could sneak in. He is the, he is one that that could probably sneak in the form. He does go back to the thousand meter distance, so that was his win. So I'm thinking that he could probably try to bounce back after going 1200 meters. So number nine, Nor Ryder with Derek Loom. Yes, I like I like uh, Nor Ryder. I like your angle there, Joe. Um, really, really thinking outside this field. He is getting that weight break, and I do think the barrier draw really sits in favor for him as he seems to perform uh, a little bit better at, on the the kind of middle of that the gate and you're right he is dropping in distance which i think is where he is has his best form at so joe has the nine nor rider steve who do you like i'm going for number three i think the likely favorite which will be lightning storm drawn two for zach Purton. zach purton has been on, on board the horse both times he won on debut last season and he reappeared this season it was a very good fourth to scotch tycoon which won at quite a big price Ahead of him in second and third were Excellent Peers and Kaying Spirit. Now, all three uh, Excellent Peers and Kaying Spirit take on Lightning Storm again. And uh, it'd be wrong just to assume that um, Lightning Storm can improve past them. But I think he probably will. He's a nice horse. I think Zach Purton has said that he's not quite the finished article yet. And I think the last time, he'd probably have maybe even got third had it not been for super class on his... I think it was super class on his inner that just made Lightning Storm work that a bit harder to get to the lead. I think he'll strip a bit fitter this time. He'll also be a bit wiser on his third run. And gate number two is also a good um, spot. I think on his end, I think um, number one, gate one, I think is excellent peers who maybe doesn't have quite so good gate speed. So hopefully, famous last words, Lightning Storm will get the lead all to himself. And I can see him making all, hopefully. I don't think it'll be a great price, but I think, I think he'll do very well. Yes, I, I agree. This is actually a horse that I went back and forth with um, for my choice in this race. But Lightning Storm is looking great and is looking for that win here. I think Barrier 2 does set this horse up perfectly. Um, it just needs to get him out of the gate, like you said, with some speed, and he could lead the field here. And Shireen, who do you like in this race? Yeah, in race four, I will go for number seven, Gorgeous Fatality. Uh, this horse is uh, really green on his uh, previous two starts over the Shratin straight course. So maybe that is the time for him to gain some racing experience because he's very young. He's just uh, three years old. And then this time he will be going to the uh, Happy Valley for the first time and racing over the thousand meter at Happy Valley, which is a turn. So maybe he can perform better. And also uh, recently he just, uh, he was just set to Chongfa for training and after coming back from Chongfa I see that this three-year-old improved a lot just like uh, some of the other horses also trained by Frankie Law he also have some other horses that have uh, improved a lot after uh, going back 
after coming back from Chongfa. So I'm quite looking forward to this uh, deep field sun uh, racing in Hong Kong. I believe that he will have some bright future here. And this time after jumping from gate seven, he can stay in the midfield. And here in this way, I think that uh, there is enough pace. So maybe uh, Gorgeous Fatality can jump well and sit in a good position under Vincent Holt. Vincent knows this horse very well. So I will be looking forward to number seven, Gorgeous Fatality. And I also believe that he will have some good value. Yes, I, I agree. Gorgeous Fatality. I am very excited to see how he's going to take to the Happy Valley track. I do. I agree with Shireen where I think the turn is only going to benefit this horse um, quite well. So excited to see if he can get his first win here in Hong Kong. Uh, so that is seven Gorgeous Vitality. And the pick that I chose was the four Excellent Press, who's jumping from Barrier One here. But they got Alexi Bedell aboard, which I think is a really great jockey here, especially for this horse. He's closing in on his first win as well. There's a lot of horses in this field who are, are closing in on that initial win. Um, I think this horse is really great. I think Barrier One kind of, you know, at first it would make me a little bit nervous, but um, just seeing how he really gets out of the gate um, I think as, as long as Alexi gets him out of the gate strong, he should be okay. Um, you know, we, he had Chadwick on the last couple of times, but, um, as we were talking off air, Chadwick is suspended right now. So we get Lexi, which is just as great of a jockey in my opinion, but he's been showing some really great improvement over the happy Valley track. So we'll see how he does here. That is the four excellent peers. So to sum up race four, Joe has the nine Nor Rider, Steve has three Lightning Storm, Shireen has the seven Gorgeous Vitality, and I have the four Excellent Peers. Now let's go on to race six, or excuse me, race five, which is the second leg of the Triple Trio, which is the Wyatt Handicap Class Four, over 1,200 meters or six furlongs. Joe, who is your pick in this race? I actually went with uh, one down the bottom with Ruin Maya, uh, Common Room, number one. Um, he's drawn number one. Uh, he's number eight. Uh, he, you know, he had some good trials at Trunk Father. Once he went to Sha Tin, he didn't perform as well. And he was there kind of, you know, trying to niggle him along and he, he wasn't, you know, firing. So I think with a little bit like going down a little bit in class and going to, to Happy Valley, um, I think he could bounce back because he or not bounce back, but he could probably hit the board. So with with him drawing one and having a poor performance, I think he has the fitness. I think some of the stuff was there, but they just couldn't put it together. He was drawn number eight. He's a debut. He's, he's a three year old. He's a more than ready. Um, you know, sometimes a lot of these maidens that are a lot of these first time starters um, just get that one race. In. And we see it a lot in the States they usually show up at big prices in the next race. So that's what I'm banking on. He could hit the board. That's, that's what I'm going for. So number eight, common room with Ruin Maya for me. I like that horse. It, it, I, you're going to get some great value on this horse. We'll see how this horse takes to the Happy Valley track. And yeah, you know, Joe had a, a good point about this horse. There was a little bit concern after his last race, but they didn't find any significant findings. I just think this horse really needed a race under his belt. So we'll see how he takes to our track. Steve, who do you like in this race? I went for number seven, Sight Hero, drawn three under Zach Purton again. He shed the maiden tag four starts back in October, and he's stayed over the course and distance since. It was a good win. He beat Exponential. He's remained in good form. And the last time, he was third to Rewarding Together, who has won again since. I think it's an open race. I think Sight Hero, for me, like the percentage call. We know he likes the course and distance. He's in good form. He's well drawn. He's got Zap Burton. And it's like all the boxes are ticked. But as I say, it is an open race. I think that you can also look at the likes of Happy Gathering, um, number 11, drawn seven under Alexis Bedell, who won uh, three starts back, but hasn't really gone on as well as I expected. But he could bounce back to form. But for me, I'm taking what I think is a solid option, Sight Hero. Uh, that's a great pick. And I think great minds think alike, because Shireen, who is your pick in this race? 
Yeah, in this race, I also agree with uh, Steve. I'm also like number seven, Seth Hero, and he will also be my best bet on Wednesday. Because uh, Steve just mentioned a lot about his advantage, I really like his performance last time out because uh, he went third uh, behind Rewarding Effort and reward, uh, Rewarding Together. And Rewarding Together also won on uh, his next start in a class three. So I think that last time his uh, third would be quite uh, solid. And this time he will jump, he will be jumping from a better gate, gate Three, so he can sit in a better position than last time out. And also, we have Zach Porton on board this horse, and I will be quite looking forward to him. So maybe here, my best bet will be number seven, Sites Hero. Yes, I like this horse, and that is my pick as well. Seven, Sight Hero. This is just a tough horse. Even when he gets in really difficult races, gets bumped around, or may not have a good break, he still puts in a really valiant effort in that stretch. Uh, to really hit the board or, or get that win. So Sight Hero is a uh, seven horse, which is my pick, Shereen pick, and Steve's pick, and Joe comes in with eight, Common Room. And that is the recap of race five. Let's go to the final leg of the Triple Trio, which is race six, which is the Wyatt Handicap at the class four, over 1,200 meters or six furlongs. Joe, who are you liking in this race? I find it funny that the uh, triple trio is all sprint races. So at the last one, um, <laughs> we still have another 1200 meter race. Uh, went with number 10, Valiant Elegance with Lyle Hewitt's and that big, that win at, at shot 10 on all weather where he dictated the pace and then let anybody pass him. He, he was, he's pretty good at that. And that's why I give credit to Lyle Hewitt's and has won a lot of races in South Africa by being somebody that could judge a pace and, and, and running away and playing catch me if you can. Um, they tried to do it again, but he had Jerry Chow, and I don't think he um, did it right, I guess, because he, Lyle Hewitson's back on, and he's always been riding with Jerry Chow. So it was actually re interesting that he went to Jerry Chow the last race and, and didn't, get, didn't perform as well. Then they bring back Lyle Hewitson because all of his other mounts before Lyle Hewitson was Jerry Chow. So that's, that's really interesting to me. Um, so I'm thinking that with the speed, he could go all the way to the front and be a left alone, and then he'll do it again. So I'm going with number 10, Valiant Elegance, Lyle Hewitson. Yes, that's number 10, jumping from barrier four. Um, you're right, Joe. I, I, I do think this horse, so he, if he gets loose on the lead, uh, this could be quite the threat for this field. But Steve, who do you like here? I went for number three, Savvy Delight. He's drawn six under Alexis Bedell. John size, a four-year-old. He's lightly erased, and he's been quite costly to follow in his short career. He's been favourite um, for a second, his penultimate race and his last race, um, beaten both times. He was second to Lucky Archangel on his penultimate run. He ran well, though, and he wasn't so good last time um, behind Smart Idea. But you know what it's like with these um, lightly raced horses. Sometimes it's two steps forward, one step back. Obviously, with the connections, you'd have to think that John Sy's horse is going to flourish at some point. And I think he can win possibly this time. I think Charming Steed's knocking on the door. And the likes of Daniel Moore has a nice ride on the unexposed Bingo Bingo for Danny Shum. And Faribault's a nice horse too. Number 11, he's uh, had an eye-catching course and distance run last time. But he's coming from breaking from gate 12, which isn't <laughs> ideal. So, for, and of course, Awesome Treasure as well. How can I forget that? Great claims under Zach Purton. But yes, for me, Savvy Delight at the fourth time of asking. Yes, the three, Savvy Delight, who put on an impressive, like Steve had said, an impressive second place finish behind uh, Lucky Archangel in December over Happy Valley at this distance. We'll be excited to see how this horse comes back uh, to form, but had a really great barrier trial just last week um, at Chan Fa. So we'll see how he comes back to Happy Valley. Shireen, who are you like in this, this race? Yeah, in race six, I will go for the uh, number one awesome treasure. Uh, he, I think that the top weight would not be a problem because last time out over Shatin, he was carrying the top weight and he finished fourth. And I think that he already gained the experience of carrying a top weight. And previously, he uh, on the International Jockeys Championship night, uh, he break his maiden tag in Hong Kong under Tom Marquan over a uh, thousand meters. But according to his pedigree, side by uh, Charm Spirit, maybe he will be looking for a 
a longer distance. So this time up to six furlong, which may shoot him better. And also jumping from gate two, he can also take advantage of the low draw. And actually in this race, I think that all the horses from the inside draws are having quite a good chance. But uh, awesome treasure with Zach Porter on board. And I think that uh, he's gonna be, uh, he's gonna have some good performance under this uh, best, the, so far this the best jockey in Hong Kong. And he can stay in a good position. Uh, he also has some good speed. So maybe he will be leading, uh, jumping from gate two, which is quite uh, ideal for him. So I will go for the top weight, number one, awesome treasure. Awesome treasure. I think it's a perfect barrier draw for him. I agree with Shireen that that interior barrier draw is only going to set this horse up perfectly for quite a race. And I see Zach Purton really getting this horse out of the gate pretty quick. It's a good, good pick there with the one awesome treasure. And my pick for race six is for charming speed with Luke aboard jumping out of barrier five. He's this horse is, is another horse. I know I've mentioned this a, a few times. He just might be stuck in second nitis a little bit, getting second um, at Happy Valley over this, this distance here. But he's consistent, at, <laughs> at least to say the least, really. He's quick out of the gate, and I really think he should be stalking the pace here in this field. He just needs a really um, clean run because it seems like this horse likes to get himself in a little bit of trouble uh, in the field, and I think Luke can really steer him out of the way for a nice clean run. Uh, which it should be, this is a tough field, um, honestly. And there, I think there's a lot of gate speed, which could pose some issues here for some of these horses, but I'm feeling pretty confident here with charming speed. Uh, so that's the number four charming speed. And to sum up our picks for the final leg of the triple trio, which is race six, Joe had the 10 valiant, valiant elegant. Uh, Steve had three savvy delight. Shireen had one awesome treasure. And I had the four charming speed. So the best part of our show is our best bets. This is quite the card, so I'm excited to hear what everybody has to say. Joe, who is your best bet? My best bet's going to be in the Class 2 race, which is the feature race, um, race number eight. And that is going to be horse number four, We the South with Jerry Chow. And I was just talking about Jerry Chow in the last one. But, you know, this time when he retains the ride on um, – on We the South after winning off of um, with Joe Marrero the first time. And then the second time he won again. And um, in that race, he ended up blowing him out again, held him off, took the lead and held him off. Now he's drawn one. Now in this race, we do have two potential like people that thought that they were going to be really, really big horses like Carroll street and also Nervous Witness, so those two down the bottom, but this is going to be their first time at Happy Valley, or at least Nervous Witness. Carroll Street has raced at Happy Valley before, like two, three races ago, and got fifth. So this one, they're going to race on the turn. Normally, they're up the straight at Sha Tin. So I took one that was, act, was, that was more, that had experience and looks really good in form and turned it around really fast. And Jerry Chow also gets the 1.5 kgs off its back so i'm gonna go with number four we the south as my best bet i like that i like that um uh, when i was taking notes on this horse uh, my biggest note was this horse should lead the field and could wire this this race it's a really strong horse here that is race eight for we the south for joe's best bet steve who is your best bet well i'm going back to race number four and that's number three lightning storm drawn well drawn in uh, two for Zach Purton. He's a winner last season, so he's kind of got a sexy profile, a nice horse coming into this unbeaten. He was only fourth on his return um, behind Scotch Tycoon, but he's a nice horse. Um, Kaying Spirit, an excellent peers, finished ahead of him that day, but I'm hoping that uh, he just has a bit more scope and potential than those two, and he can improve past them. Zach Purton, as I said before, has said that he's not the finished article, still needs to learn, and that's understandable after just a couple of runs. But um, hopefully, with Barrier 2, he can get an uh, uncontested lead. And uh, as I say, famous last words, but uh, he should strip fitter, fit, um, strip wiser as well, and uh, have a bit too much class, I would hope, for the field. Yes, I agree. Uh, like I mentioned before, Lightning Storm was a horse I went back and forth with in that race. A really good, challenging horse. I think it's a great best bet here. Um, and Shireen, I know you, you spoke a little bit about your best bet, but your best bet um, is Sight Hero. 
Yes, right. My best bet in the second leg of the Triple Trio Race 5, I really like number 7, Sides Hero. He will also be ridden by Zach Porton. And actually, Zach uh, has some uh, really great mounts on Wednesday. And let's see whether he can have some good performance during the time that Joe Morera is in the suspension. So, uh, Sides Hero is a really consistent horse recently. And this time, he can definitely take advantage of the Gate 3. And I'm really looking forward to him to go back to the winner circle again. So, my best bet race five number seven site hero yes site hero was, was my pick for that race as well just a great looking horse um, i think we're going to see kind of a lot come out of that horse in that race so very excited to see him and my best bet for the card comes in at race two ten seizing the moment with karis tetanabor now morera typically has this mount um but like shereen mentioned with his suspension we get Karis Teton aboard, which I think is um, a great jockey to really put on this horse. Um, he comes in with a the lightest weight in the field. He's been improving each time out. He's just sneaking on um, another win here at Happy Valley. Um, he is going over, uh, you know, this this track. He seems really familiar. He's, he's really taking great form on the Happy Valley track. And it's just showed great performance. When this horse gets under pressure, he knows how to click into gear and just really put on quite a performance. Um, we, we've seen that a couple times out of him where he just really takes to the pressure. So we'll see how he does. I think he has a great shot here in race two, which is a the class three race um, over 1,200 meters. So my best bet is race two and number 10, seizing the moment. So to sum up our best, Joe has the, um, excuse me, Joe has the four, we the south and race eight. Steve has the three lightning storm and race form. And Shireen has seven sight hero and race five. And mine was the 10 and race two. Seizing the moment. Now for our value bets of the card. I think there's a lot of great value here. And out of all these races, really, you can make some, some good money. So Joe, who are you liking for your value bet? Uh, for my value bet, I went to race number seven, and that is uh, horse number two, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this name right, Atoli Bigiel. Um, he's raced in New Zealand at Ellerslie and won uh, as a two-year-old in, in two listed races. Got the, the, the second, the penultimate one, he ended up getting second on um, at Ellerslie, but only beaten by 0. .2, so like about a neck. And he's ran a lot on firm going and a lot on heavy going so i know there's a horse in here uh, there's there's a couple actually that we've tipped before so i made this the value bet the handicappers put him at in a class three race carrying 59 and he's a three-year-old and he's going he, he trialed okay at Chongfa, and i also at happy valley shot tid so he could sneak in there i'm thinking uh coming up fresh in this race, but he's up against like Tornado Fount, Tornado Fountain or Phantom, smart idea, one of Sarah's best bets before, and, and I think also Steve. So I know it's going to be a tough task, but having that great wet form um, in New Zealand, I think he could bring it over to, to, to Happy Valley. And, and plus he's racing on, he's racing um, in a, on a tighter track and, and, and something that's, um, a shorter distance. So I think that, uh, yeah, I'll give him a chance. Uh, another horse number two, a uh, Tully Big Eel with Vincent Ho. I'm glad you said that horse's name because I was writing my notes and I was like, I'll leave that pronunciation up to Joe. <laughs> but a good looking horse here. I would, you know, had some decent barrier trials like Joe has mentioned over, of course, Sha Tin, Chung Pa, and lastly at Happy Valley. So Keeping him back here at Happy Valley, we'll see how he takes to this course. I believe the value right now, at least in the Australian market, you're looking at $11.60, so good value there. Steve, who's your value bet for the card? I went to, towards the latter half of the card, race number nine, and I went for number five, Presence, with Vincent Ho. I'm quite sweet on this horse. He's really nice. He's um, a three-time winner in Australia when he was known as IndyCar. And he's likely raced in Hong Kong. Um, this is his ideal course and distance. He's had two races where he's finished behind the very progressive cheerful days. who simply can't stop winning. Vincent Ho maintains the partnership from gate three, an ideal draw. 
and I think his best days are ahead of him. And I hopefully, hopefully he, he can win this race. I do like his chances. It's a very open race, though. Maldives is a super consistent sort with Purton on board and Zone D. Well, one of these days, Zone D will win. And of course, that's the the horse, of course, that got um, um, Moreira incurred the um, suspension for six meetings. And Karis Teton rides that horse. So that's uh, an interesting horse. If the cars fall right for Zone D, he could well win this. But uh, he has been very costly to follow. And as I say, presence, he hasn't had too many chances in Hong Kong. And I think he could certainly place at nice odds. Yes, I, I agree. I was looking at this horse as well. It's a very tough field for this race. Um, but had great form coming in behind Maldives and cheerful days that last time out at Happy Valley on January 12th. Um, he's another horse that I just feel is really coming in strong. His performance, even though he got fifth, was an incredible performance for this horse. So I, I think he can uh, have a repeat of a great performance and put in some tough competition against these familiar company. And Shireen, who's your best bet for this card? Yeah, for my value bet, it will be in the opener. I like a race one, number 10, Chiu Chow brother. Uh, he will be go, uh, going to Happy Valley for the first time, and he uh, have some really good barrier trial before. And this time, he will also up in distance to the 1650 meters. I think that he is always seeking for a longer distance because in his previous uh, three starts in this season, he is finishing closer and closer uh, when the distance is uh, longer so this time maybe a mile will be more suitable for him and actually in the no opener i think that several horses are also having some good chances including the number two fifa hunter but he will be jumping from the wide draw again and also dr winning from gate two and charter pins from gate three these horses are having quite good recent form but uh chiu chiu prada jumping from gate five i also think that he can stay in a good position if he jumps well and recently i think that this horse has some uh consistent gate speed so i will be looking forward to him i think that he really should this uh distance so i uh, my value bet in race one number 10 chiu chow brother yes chiu chow brother looks tough here and i like this horse a lot i kind of went back and forth of this being my value bet as well um he's closing in on a win and deservedly so um i i do agree he's going to be able to he has great gate speed so he's going to be able to get out quite nicely and i think the longer distance is Perfectly suitable for this horse. And now my value bet comes in in race 10, the class three over nine furlongs. It's the sixth meaningful star. Um, we got Bentley aboard, jumping out of barrier one. It's great form over this track and, and this distance at that, at that nine furlong. Um, he's one off the rail here because he is jumping out of barrier one, which is proven. I know some horses tend to struggle here, but he just seems that's, that's where he performs his best. Um, but... We'll see how he does. I think you're going to get a lot of great value here because I think just some of his past performance might put a lot, some of the punters off as, as maybe not, not a good pick here, but I really think this horse is going to surprise you. He's closing in on a win here. He's going to really have great form. Um, so my, my value bet is in race 10, number six. To sum up our value bets, Joe has the two in race seven. Steve has the five in race nine. Shireen has the 10 in race one. And I have the six in race 10. Well, that is all of our picks. We have you covered for most every race. So hopefully we're giving out some great winners, but we'll leave the one race up to you guys to handicap yourself. But good luck to everybody at Happy Valley. We'll see you later.